Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to recreate shiny, high gloss plastic text and graphics. This is an update of tutorials I've done on earlier versions of Photoshop. This version is quicker and more streamlined. For your convenience, I provided this black and white graphic of bars that you can use to place your text between. Feel free to use your own bars or other graphic to frame your text. The first step is to delete the white background behind the graphic. To do this, click the lock icon to unlock the layer. Open your channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control click or command click the RGB channel to make a selection of the black shapes. Open back the layers panel and press the delete key to delete the white background. Deselect it by pressing Control or command D. Temporarily hide the shapes by clicking the eyeball icon next to the layer. We'll make a new layer below it by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. We'll fill the bottom empty layer with any color. The color is irrelevant since we're going to replace it with a gradient overlay. Let's press control or command plus delete to fill it with our background color. Your background color may be different from mine, but as I mentioned, it doesn't matter. Double click the layer to open its layer style window. Click Gradient Overlay and the Gradient Bar. Click the black and white box and click the lower right stop. Click the lower white box and for the brightness, type in 50%. Its hexadecimals are 80, 80, 80. Click OK on the color picker and the Gradient Editor. The blend mode is normal and the opacity is 100%. Check reverse and choose radial. Make the angle 90 degrees and the scale 110%. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. We'll convert it into a smart object so later if we want to, we can adjust the gradient size, tone, and location. To do this, Click the icon at the upper right corner and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Distort folder and click Glass. Choose Tiny Lens. Make the Distortion 20, the Smoothness 1, and the Scaling 60%. Make the bars visible and hide the background. Make a new layer. In this layer, we'll add our text. Open your horizontal type tool and pick a thick, heavy font since they'll have the best results for this effect. I'm picking a font called Alfarn Regular, which comes free with the Adobe Type Kit if you have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. I provided the link to the font in my video's description. I'll make its size 250 points, but feel free to adjust its size based on the font you choose and how many characters in your text. I'll make its aliasing sharp and center alignment. Click on your document and type out your text. We'll center it in a moment. To adjust the space between all of your characters, highlight all of them and press and hold Alt or Option and the right or left arrow key on your keyboard. To adjust the space between just two characters, click between those characters and repeat the keystrokes. To center the text, open your Move tool and press Ctrl or Command A to select the entire document. Click the Align Horizontal Centers icon and the Align Vertical Centers icon. Then deselect it. Even though my text is technically centered, I'd like to move it to the right a bit to optically center it. To do this, I'll press the right arrow key on my keyboard multiple times. Quick tip, if you press and hold the shift key while pressing the arrow key, it'll move the text 10 pixels at a time. We'll convert our image into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively, and if we want to, replace it with other text or graphics without having to redo the effects. 
To do this, shift click the Shapes layer to make it active as well, and click Convert to Smart Object. Double click an empty area of the top layer to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the Color Box. For now, type into the hexadecimal field 8 and 5 zeros. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to quickly change its colors. Click Inner Glow. Change the Blend Mode to Multiply and the Opacity to 50%. Make the color black. Then click OK. Tick Edge. Make the choke 10% and the size 30 pixels. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel and the technique is Smooth. The depth is 32% and the direction is Up. The size is 31 pixels and the soften is 2 pixels. Make sure Global Light is unchecked. The angle is 150 degrees and the altitude is 46 degrees. Open the Gloss Contour List and click the gear icon. Make sure Small List is checked so it'll show the names of the contours. Click Triple Ring. If you don't see it, click back on the gear icon and click Contours. When you see this message, just click OK. The Highlight Blend Mode is Screen and its opacity is 75%. The shadow mode is irrelevant since we'll make its opacity 0%. Click Contour and open your list. Click Ring Double and click OK. The front reflection is a bit too bright, so make a copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Double click Bevel and Emboss of the copy to open it in the Layer Style window. Reduce the altitude to 45 degrees and reduce its opacity to 60%. Shift click the bottom layer and convert them into one smart object. Make the background visible and double click an empty area of the top layer to open its Layer Style window. Click Inner Glow. Click the color box and pick White. Change the Blend Mode to Color Dodge and make the opacity 25%. Check Center, make the choke 15% and the size 25 pixels. Click Drop Shadow. The Blend Mode is Linear Burn, the Opacity is 10%, and the Angle is 90 degrees. The Distance is 20 pixels, the Spread is 0, and the Size is 15 pixels. Lastly, I'll show you how to quickly change the Plastics color. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Simply drag the hue slider to the right or left. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.